I've lived in Iroz my whole life and I felt completely safe. My door was not locked. It was not locked. The bloodshed in the war with Hamas began with a horrific series of attacks in Israel, including on the kibbutz near Oz. Near Oz was a place of peace and light, a tiny kibbutz community all but wiped out now after a bloodbath of hate that started a war. At that time, my safe room wasn't ready for anything like that. So we made a plan that if he can't hold the door, if, if they're coming in huge numbers and he can't, if they shoot the door, he will take the weapon and shoot us. And I know it's, it's very hard, but I would have preferred that on being in, in Gaza right now. At that time, um, I realized that my dad died. They killed him. He was in his safe room with my mom, and he's, he's a, he was a strong man. He was fighting with them. Like he held the door and they tried to open the door and they opened the door and shot him. It just opened this much and shot him luckily in the chest, like he died instantly. Like, it's funny that the first question I asked my mom, like, was it quick? And did they take the body? Because we know they took bodies. And I thought to myself, like, he wouldn't want that. And I was very, <laughs> it's hard. I was relieved that he died quickly and that, um, they left him there, like we could bury him, we could, we could respect him. Like a lot of the people around me, they don't know where the bodies are. They don't know if they're alive. And some of them we do, we, we know they took bodies. Just to humiliate us, they don't have anything to do with the bodies. Israel says about a quarter of the residents of this kibbutz were either massacred or taken hostage by Hamas militants. We had people in the kibbutz who were very involved with the Palestinian um, people. Who drove, we had a one person, he's in Gaza right now, he's kidnapped, that he drove sick uh, kids from Gaza to the hospitals in Israel. We're a very peace-loving community. Like the, the country, they always make fun of us, that we're very like people-loving and we want peace. And in Israel, not everyone feels the same. But we don't feel the same anymore. I always told my son, there are kids just like you in Gaza, just, just want to go to school and just want to live and just want to be happy and be free. And that's what I thought before. It's very hard for me as a mother to think about a woman who came to my home and saw the pictures of my kids and still came to, to, to steal and to terrify my kids. And the first thing she did is to open my electricity cupboard and take off the electricity just in the safe room. So she sat and watched TV and my kids, we had no water, no food, no air conditioning. It's the middle of the summer. It was so hot. Like she saw my kids' pictures on the walls. She knew there's a family inside, like terrified kids. I think that she's a mother as well because she took my kids' clothes and she took my clothes and she took, um, she took my credit card. And then she went back to Gaza and she, she went to the supermarket and she bought, I got a list of the things she bought. It broke my faith that people are good. That it, I never thought that a woman will do that. Like men, yes, soldiers, yes, Hamas terrorists, yes. I knew they were very cruel and very driven, but I never thought the common people, kids and women, would participate in things like that. And it broke my, in my faith in the goodness of people, but especially people from Gaza, because I really, I really believed that the women and children were just, they were ki kidnapped by Hamas terrorists. I really believed the Hamas kidnapped Gaza. And um, I don't anymore. I think they are participating. I think in that morning they told them, we are going to do it, do and this, who wants to, to come in? Or they invited people they trust, and they told them, you can take whatever you want. You can take, you can plunder, you can steal, and uh, we'll keep you safe. And they told themselves, why not? Why not? Like, I'm a woman, I'm a mother, I'm a teacher. I work with kids. I believe that all kids are good. All kids are good.
No one is born bad. No one is born a terrorist. And I feel very guilty that I raised my kids in a place that weren't safe. I believed that I'm safe. I believed my kids are safe. I really believed it. Like, we have this sense of we want revenge, revenge, which is a horrible, horrible feeling. But I find myself showing my son's video of, of houses being bombed in, in Gaza because I want to show him that Israel is still strong. I want to show him that the army is strong, that someone is protecting us because he doesn't feel it anymore. And something in this faith was broken. It is broken. We don't believe in anyone anymore. We don't believe in the country. We don't believe in the army. We don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe in, in Gaza. We don't believe in the world. We don't believe in anyone who will come to help us. And it's um, like everything we believed was shattered in that moment. I don't want Hamas to exist anymore. I want the, the normal, the, the, the good people in Gaza to rule. I want someone who my country can talk to. And uh, right now it's, it sounds like it will never happen, but now we're just, we're concentrating on grieving and dealing with the kids. My kids, they have nightmare, they, they don't eat, they, they, they lost a lot. Not just my dad, they shot my dog and, and they lost a lot of friends and I lost a lot of friends and a lot of pupils. A lot of my pupils died or they lost their parents. And I try to concentrate on not falling to the revenge that we feel, like we want revenge. I'm trying not to focus on that because it's not healthy. It's not going to help my kids. Nowhere is safe in the world. Like Israel is the, is the safest place for Jews. That's what I believe. And it's very hard. I decided even in the safe room, I told them everything that's going on. I told them there are bad people in the kibbutz, but the daddy is looking after you and mommy is looking after you and we're strong and we're together. I told them about all the friends that died. And I told them about the dog. They were very sad about the dog. And, and um, my father, we have, um, since we came here, we have a ceremony. Every evening at eight, we tell a funny story about my dad just to, to keep him alive, just to... And I tell them that he's thinking about them and they see stars in the sky and they say, oh, that's Grandpa saying hello. And they saw a dolphin and say, oh, Grandpa sent us the dolphin. And like they're young enough to still believe that he's here with them. My son, he asked me to call his friends from school and I called and it was <laughs> like when they answered, I said, okay, you're alive. And then I called one of his best friends and his mother answered and she said, listen, he died. And I had to tell him, okay, and they need to know. They can't live in a world like, I don't want him to tell himself stories. I want him to know the truth and I want him to have hope. Like, I keep telling him we are strong and we're safe here. He, he doesn't think, think he's safe here in a lot. Like we went, um, they took him to watch, to to watch stars with telescopes. And he kept looking, looking, looking. And said, what are you looking for? He said, terrorists. And I can't say I'm not afraid as well. I sit, and from my hotel um, room, I see uh, an amazing view of the ocean and Jordan. And I think to myself, can they come? Are we safe here? And my husband said, yes, we're safe. You said that about Niroz as well. Like, we don't feel 100% safe because what happened? Like my faith in the goodness of people is gone. But my kids are still young enough to know better, to, to believe in, in, to have hope, to have hope. I don't have hope for peace in, in my life, in my lifetime anymore. And, but I want my kids to have this hope.